nostalgia. It's always a wonderful thing to experience from watching old cartoons that you love or by playing your favourite video games growing up. It's a wonderful experience. And for me, nothing screams more nostalgia to me than the Halo franchise. The history of Halo is always a fascinating thing to me. Originally, Halo was going to be a very different game. Originally created by Bungie before 343 Industries took over, Halo was originally going to be a real-time strategy game for the Mac and Windows operating systems, but later changed into a third-person action game. Then, Microsoft acquired Bungie and made it a launch title for the original Xbox. Then later down the timeline, Bungie decided to change Halo from a third-person shooter to a first-person shooter. Pretty much everybody knows the history of Halo at this point, so I'm only going to give a short version of how Halo came to be. I could go on and on and on and on about how many awards Bungie's Halo has won, but that's not the point of this video. Plus, with the release of Halo Infinite and its success, depending on how you look at it, I thought what better way to look at a game that started it all. Halo Combat Evolved. However, the version I'm holding in my hand, I'm not going to have a look at. I'll be looking at Halo 1 on the Master Chief Collection for the PC. Pretty much there's nothing different about it except for smoother frames and access to the PC exclusive multiplayer maps, which I will be talking about later. I was originally going to film the Xbox version here, but uh, unfortunately, tragedy had struck. My Roxio HD Pro had passed away. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that, like, Halo 1 must always be played on the PC and the PC is the only way to play Halo 1. It's just with the circumstances I've got at the moment, um, I've got a better chance of recording it on my computer. Also, think of this as a thank you for helping me reach over 100 subscribers! I honestly can't thank you guys enough. I'm glad you guys are enjoying my content and subscribing to the channel. So, as the 100 sub special, why don't we have a look at Halo Combat Evolved? Wait, hang on. Me! That's right, it's me! After you shot me! Wait, hang on, how did you survive that gunshot to the head? Well, um, you see. Hang on, why are you dressed up like Reverse Flash? Well, if you let me finish, then I... Also, how come you don't have the same sound effect for your entrance? SHUT UP! Let me finish my goddamn sentence, and then you'll know! Fair? Anyhow. Anyhow. <clears throat> yes! It is I, Reverse Future You! You see, after you shot me in the head, I thought I was going to die. Thankfully, I had my skin regeneration perk on, so it only graced my skin. That sounds incredibly stupid. When I got up, I decided to look up one of your old videos. I found your top 5 Xbox 360 games. Knowing that Halo is your all-time favorite game series, I expected at least one of the games to be on your list. The amount of disgust and anger I felt that you didn't include one Halo game on that list was so unbearable. I dedicated myself to calling you a hypocrite and destroying your life. And that's how I became Reverse Future Tom. Dude. That's kinda cringe. What? Mate, you decided to go on an old video of mine where I was clearly trying to be different and failing at it. And plus, if I included any Halo game on that list, it would just be generic. But, to be fair, you do have a point. I should have included any of the Halo 360 era games on that list. But I've grown, you see, and clearly that video had a lot of flaws. It doesn't warrant my life being destroyed, does it? Also, how come you decided to look up one of my old videos after being shot? Well, I don't give a shit! Prepare to know why you suck! Number one! Do you still have that skin regeneration perk on? Well, well um, no, I kind of used it up during my, um, explanation. Good. Oh. Anyhow. And there it is. One of the most iconic gaming themes in history. Beautifully composed by the great Martin O'Donnell, who did the entire soundtrack for the Halo franchise. Well, for the Bungie era of Halo. It's crazy to me of how I could just get excited for a game just on the menu music alone. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go and change my pants. As you can see, you have four different options for difficulty. Easy, Normal, Heroic or Legendary. Of 
course, I'm an absolute pro with this game. I mean, like, I've played this game more times than I can count. So it's only obvious that I picked the most obvious difficulty. Before we get into the first level, the Pillar of Autumn, I'll be thanking each stage from a town to see how I feel about each level. Also, I'm kind of bummed out that the Master Chief Collection didn't include the iconic loading screen for Halo 1. Excuse me, I need to go and change my pants again. My like, goddamn Martin, how can you make a loading screen sound so good whilst also sounding so haunting and mysterious? Anyhow, we cut to the first level, with an odd droning noise with our first shot being the Halo Ring. Immediately, the game hits you with questions like, what is that ring and why is it so important? We then get a speech by Captain Keys about what is happening at the moment. If did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. We made a blind jump. How did they... Get here first? The Covenant ships have always been faster. As for tracking us all the way from Reach, at light speed my maneuvering options were limited. We were running dark, yes? Until we decelerated, no one could have missed the hole we tore in subspace. They were waiting for us on the far side of the planet. So, where do we stand? Our fighters are mopping up the last of their recon picket now, nothing serious. But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS-class battle groups, make it three capital ships per group. And in about 90 seconds, they'll be all over us. Again, we're hit with more questions, like, the Covenant? Who are they? Why are we running from them? Reach? What's that about? Well, if you use your big brain like a big boy, or girl, girls, girls can have big brains too. Am I cancelled yet? As far as we know, we're at war with a faction called the Covenant. They've been chasing us from Reach, and they've always had better technology than us. And I know what you're thinking, just shh, just pretend it's 2001, and we don't know anything about it, and you're just learning this. Keys activates Combat Alert Alpha. As this is going on, he calls on Cortana, voiced by Jen Taylor, an intelligent AI, and an AI girlfriend. What? Why are you looking at me like that? He calls on her to... And Cortana. Hmm? Let's give our old friends a warm welcome. I've already begun. We then get this cool montage of the Marines preparing for a fight, whilst a variation of Brothers in Arms plays in the background. We then get a speech from one of the best characters in Halo, and in fiction in general, Sergeant Johnson, voiced by the great David Scully. Even though we haven't really been introduced to Sergeant Johnson and didn't really find out his name until the sequel, but shh! Fun fact, depending on the difficulty that you choose, Sergeant Johnson's speech is different. Once again, it is our job to finish with the Fly Force start. We are leaving this ship platoon and engaging the Covenant on solid ground. When we meet the enemy, we will rip their skulls from their spines and toss them away laughing! Man, we let those dumb bugs out to the middle of nowhere to keep from getting their filthy claws on Earth. But we stumbled onto something that's so hot for that they're scrambling over each other to get it. Well, I don't care if it's God's own anti-son-of-a-bitch machine or a giant hula hoop, we're not gonna let them have it. What we will let them have is a belly full of lead and a pool of their own blood to drown in. As we cut to more crewmates preparing for combat, we finally get introduced to our main character with the most epic music ever. Right. Let's thaw him out. Okay. Bringing low-level systems online. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. He's hot! Blowing the pins in five! You are Master Chief. A super soldier that rivals the greatness of Captain America and Doom Guy and it's quick to learn that you are an important figure in this war. We get introduced to a quick tutorial segment of how to look around, how to move, and how your shields work. You see, in this game, you have two health bars, your shield and your health. 
Shields obviously protect your health, but once it's depleted then you'll be wide open for any shots that might kill you. Luckily, shields can regenerate when you're not in combat, but with health, you need to find a health kit. As the tutorial level ends, we are sunny attacked! Oh God. They're trying to get through the door! Security! Intruders in the oh, too. Sam! Sam! Oh no, not Sam, the tutorial guy. No. Come on, we've got to get the hell out of here. This way. No, not the yellow man. Well, shit. Looks like we gotta get out of here. Um, where do I go? Oh, Jesus! Hey, excuse me, guys. I need to know where to go. Oh, oh okay. Never mind. Aha! A door. This will get me where I need to go. Aliens? We're fighting goddamn aliens! Alright, you two, protect me from that thing! The captain needs you on the bridge ASAP! Better follow me! Anyhow, after going through a goddamn war zone, we finally meet up with Captain Keys. Keys gives us a quick catch-up, explaining how things aren't going so well. Hmm. Yeah, I can see why. Cortana, meanwhile, brags about her mad gamer skills before the cannon for the ship is hit and put offline. Clearly, the Covenant has better gamer skills than Cortana, it seems. Keyes initiates the evacuation of the Pillar of Autumn, and says that he's going to try and land the Autumn onto the ring they found. We also get this brilliant line with, again, epic music by Martin. With all due respect, sir, this war has enough dead heroes. I appreciate your concern, Cortana, but it's not up to me. The protocol is clear. Destruction or capture of a shipboard AI is absolutely unacceptable, and that means you're leaving ship. Lock in a selection of emergency landing zones, upload them to my neural lace, and then sort yourself for a heart transfer. Aye, aye, sir. It's not much of the speech, but it's the music that goes with the speech. It tells us that, like, we've been doing this war for a very long time, and we've lost so many heroes through this conflict. And the way Cortana says her line, with a little bit of sadness in her voice, tells us that she's probably lost a lot of friends through this conflict, and now that Keys is probably going to be added to that list. It's great. Honestly, it's great. Keys gives you the order to get Cortana off the ship, which makes you think, Oh God, not an escort mission! But this one has a bit more of a risk to it. Keys states that if the Covenant capture Cortana, they will learn all of our weapons, war plans, and Earth. Meaning that the Covenant has not found Earth yet, which is odd because knowing they have greater technology than us, then surely they would use their version of Google Maps to find Earth. Either way, there is a greater risk losing your companion, so it makes the player more dedicated to the mission. Now you may be thinking, um, how exactly is Cortana coming with us? Don't worry, the game's got you covered on that. Good luck, Master Chief. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Cortana. I know we just met, but I didn't bring any protection with me. See now? You don't have to worry about a companion accompanying you, since your companion is in your head. Finally, we get our first weapon. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. What's the point, then? Why? Bother giving me a gun if it ain't loaded then, ya damn wet! Okay, fine. I guess we gotta find ammo for it then. Ha! Ah, alien! <laughs> Die, you alien scrum! Wait, hang on. So it was loaded! You son of a bitch. You don't get to lie to Master Chief. What the hell are you doing? Security to the bridge. The Master Chief has gone rampant. Take him down, boys. Anyhow, as we continue, we finally come across one of the most iconic weapons in the Halo franchise, the Assault Rifle, which is beautiful to behold. A machine gun that holds 60 bullets per mag and destroys any alien to come near it, with one of the most satisfying sounds from a gun I have heard in any video game. In fact, all of the guns in Halo 1 have such a satisfying firing sound to each one. Heck, even swapping your weapons is satisfying to listen to! Anyhow, better take a third gun with me. You never know what you're facing out there. Hmm, I'll take the plasma rifle. Wait, hang on. I can only carry two weapons?! Oh no! Imagine my shock! 
Yes, in Halo, you can only carry two weapons. Unlike other FPS shooters at the time, like Doom or Goldeneye, where you can carry as many weapons as you like, Halo restricts you to two weapons to make the game more challenging, which later FPS games sort of followed on later. Going back onto the guns, one of the things I really like in Halo is the Covenant weapons. You see, unlike our weapons, the Covenants operate a bit differently. Instead of bullets, they fire energy, specifically plasma energy. And instead of reloading, they instead have a cooldown meter, meaning you can't just hold down the fire button, otherwise the weapon stops and lets out excess heat. Essentially, what you get is a weapon that doesn't need to reload, but just make sure you don't overuse it. Until the Needler comes in and ruins my point about the weapons, but we haven't got there yet, so sh In this level, we are introduced to our first two enemies. The Grunts, these little aliens that can be easily dealt with, if anything, they're cannon fodder, and the Elites, who are more tricky to deal with, since they can dodge around the map and aren't afraid to deck you in the face as if you've just insulted their favourite football team. Additionally, they have shields as well, so you can't instantly kill them like the Grunts, but once their shield is down, go to town on them. Throughout the levels of Halo, you can also pick up power-ups. Only two, though, however. These come in two flavours. Overshield, which gives an additional two layers of shield energy, or Camouflage, which... I mean, it says it in the name. Oh, before I forget, you also have a melee attack that is RIDICULOUSLY powerful if you hit an enemy from the back. <laughs> God, I just love the music in this game! I know it seems like I'm going to continue to ramble on about the music of Halo, but I don't care. This music is honestly one of the best I've ever heard, and it comes in at the right moments just to make you feel more immersed in the world of Halo. No! Looks like the Covenant to you. Hmm, I wonder why they would want to do that. Near the end of the level, we are introduced to our grenades, which I must say, God Damn, the human nukes feel like you're throwing a goddamn nuke! You do also get plasma grenades, but I'll get to those later. As Cortana says, we need to get to the last lifeboat before it launches. We do so, and this cutscene plays. Oh no! Oh no! Now would be a very good time to leave! Punch it. Ah, sir! We're gonna make it, aren't we, sir? I don't want to die out here! What do I get a bad feeling from that? AGAIN! Why does Martin put one of the best songs from the game during an emergency landing cutscene and make it so goddamn epic?! God damn it, Martin! You can't keep making me change my pants! Anyhow, we finished the first level. What did I think of it? It's a great solid level that introduces the basic controls and the story of the game and I continuously always replay the first level because it is that replayable and good. So, a solid 10 for me. We enter the second level of the game with a rough start. We're coming in too fast! I'm sure it's fine. I mean, if I can survive it, then... Uh, oh... Oh... oh mm. Never mind. When you finally first step foot onto Halo, you feel the sense of awe. Even back in 2001, this must have felt like wonder. The beautiful landscapes with luscious waterfalls, and the enemies constantly shooting at you. Diving deeper into the landscape, we discover more marines who, this time, actually survived the crash. <laughs> Must I repeat to myself how GODLY this music is! What's playing right now is Brothers in Arms, my favourite soundtrack from the game. It perfectly encapsulates fighting aliens with your comrades. Ah yes, JPEG Planet. 
We are introduced to Echo 419, our sort of workhorse for getting around Halo. She drops off a warthog so we can search for three other crash sites that contain marines. This is where we get introduced to the vehicle section in Halo. Personally, one of the things I think that separated Halo from other FBF shooters at the time, like Quake or Doom, was the introduction of playable vehicles. Like the guns, we have a variety of vehicles, some human, some covenant, each with their own uses. Like this Warthog, you have three seats in it, one for driving, one for the passenger, and a third for to mount the minigun. It's really useful when playing with AI and teammates. As we are travelling to the three zones, we discover this cave that Cortana says, This cave is not a natural formation. Someone built it, so it must lead somewhere. That sentence leaves us with more questions like, who built the ring and what was its purpose? We travel to each of the three zones to help the marines clear out the enemies, and Echo 419 picks them up. Simple as pie. Fun fact! If all the marines die in the zone, you get this defeated dialogue from Cortana. We couldn't save them. I recommend that we stay near the beacon and wait for extraction. In the same level, we are introduced to one of my favorite weapons, the Sniper Rifle. A powerful four-round rifle that easily guns down any enemies with such a beautiful and distinct sound. Oh yeah, there's also um, a new enemy, the Jackals, they have, um, shields, I, I, I don't know what the fuck you want to say. After rescuing the marines from the three crash sites, we get news that Captain Keys is alive somehow. No, really, somehow, I don't know how in the name of John Halo that you can crash this giant goddamn ship onto this ring and not die. Well, either way, the level is done. So what did I think about it? It's a 9 out of 10 for me. The only thing that stopped it being a 10 was that we had to save the marines four times, so it felt a bit repetitive. In this level, you have to rescue Keys as he's being held on a Covenant ship. This is the part where the game tells you that this is the sniping section of the game. How do I know this? Because you literally start with a sniper rifle, you dummy! One of the things I do like in this mission is that if you press the flashlight toggle whilst aiming with the sniper, you get a night vision aim, which, to be honest, I didn't really use that much. It's a cool gag, if anything. Also, I know this is supposed to be the stealth part of the game, but we don't have any silencer, so the Covenant will instantly know where you are as soon as you shoot, so it doesn't really matter if you want to be a sneaky assassin when you get detected a second later. But hey, the sniper still feels great to fire, so it somewhat redeems itself with that. Plus, great music is always a plus. I like it how, even though there was plenty of explosions and gunshots, the Covenant stationed around the corner didn't even notice. Maybe they have alien earbuds on. Wonder what they're listening to. <laughs> Did I ever tell you how great password grenades are? They're great. We get to the ship and clear out the area. Or so we think. Hmm, I'm guessing that's the boss. These are hunters. Powerful tanks that can easily kill you if you're not careful. You can kill them normally, but really the best spot to hit them is their exposed back. Thankfully, I have a war crime in my hand, so they're not a problem. After dealing with them, we finally enter the Truth and Reconciliation, only to discover that there is no one there. Ah, oh, come on guys, I bought the Wii games for nothing! Ooh, shiny lightsaber! <laughs> oh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an energy sword, probably one of the most terrifying and iconic weapon in the game. Those things can instantly slice through you like butter, so if you see an elite carry one of those things, you better start praying, because boy, they ain't got no time to hear you speak! We deal with the welcoming party, only to discover that we can't get through this door, so that means we have to find a way around it to open it from the other side. Even though the marines can come with us, like, we're not driving a vehicle through here, so wouldn't it be better if the marines come with us? I don't know, maybe I don't have enough of a static face to find out. Even though the Covenant ship part of the level is full of narrow and confusing hallways, I do like the details of the ship, from the purple aesthetics to the alien sounds of doors opening. It's a nice package. We get the door opened and continue our way through the ship. Before I forget, there's a weapon that I forgot to talk about, and that would be the Needler. 
This Covenant weapon is unique because it's like an SMG, except once enough needles hit the target, they will explode, killing the enemy instantly. Plus they follow the direction of the target, which would be scary if the needles weren't following up on a dial-up connection. Yeah, to be honest, the needle is not really my favourite weapon in CE. Even though it is quite powerful, the fact that the needles travel at such a slow distance and the ammunition for it is quite small, it's, it's kind of rubbish. Really, I only use it as a last resort if all the other guns are out of ammo. After slogging through enemies, we finally reach keys. <sighs> Coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Bitch, have you seen the amount of fucking work that I did just to save your sorry little ass? While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. They call it... Halo. Hey! He did it! He said the word! To cut it short, Halo is revealed to be a super weapon, and apparently the Covenant holds it like a religious significance, and the Covenant is looking for the control room to Halo. Keys gives us a new mission to find the control room, as we prepare to leave the ship, which now turns into... Uh, an escort mission. It's not that bad, per se, but if Keys dies, then it's game over. What? <laughs> I ain't saying shit. <laughs> Here, we call for Echo 419, only to be rejected, just like in real life. 419 states that we need to find our own ride, with probably the most sarcastic sorry I've ever heard. You're better off finding your own ride. And yeah, that would be funny if I didn't have the goddamn captain with me! And that's going on with the port card, Echo 419. Key says that if we can find a Covenant dropship, he can pilot us out of here. Which makes me question how he can pilot an alien ship, but I'm not going to question that. Of course, we get to the dropship without listening to the most epic song in Halo. <laughs> Honestly, I will never get tired of hearing that song. We make our escape, and the level ends. This level is an 8 out of 10, because of the escort mission and that sometimes the ship can be a bit difficult to navigate sometimes. Next, we go on to one of my favourite levels in the game, the Silent Cartographer. I kid you not, the opening of this level hits hard. Clearing the beach out all Normandy style. Except for our commerce not being instantly gunned down like flies, but shut your f. Somebody order a warthog. Uh, yes, I was told that it would come with chips. As Cortana states, we have to find the map room. We do so only to be locked out of the room. Cortana contacts Keys to say that we have to shut off Halo security systems in order to get the door open. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Keys states that he might be out of contact when he arrives to, um, somewhere, so we have to find the switch to disable Halo's security system. Just to sidetrack a bit, I find it aesthetically pleasing that you can see the outside of the ring. Because even though you're on a planet, you have to remind yourself that you're on a mechanical ring. A mechanical ring that imitates Earth. It's weird and so good to look at. Back to the game, we find a pathway into the centre of the island. Go up and face- OH NO! HUNTERS! I don't have a war crime weapon with me! Oh god, this is going to be a tough fight. What? Yeah, if you couldn't tell already, the pistol in Halo 1 is extremely powerful for some unknown reason. Like, even more powerful than most of the weapons. What are we loading into the pistol? Nuclear bullets! Anyhow, bizarre pistol aside, we find an entrance to the security room, massacre everyone, and turn off the security. Now, the door to the map room is open to us. We just have to... 
make our way back up to the map room. Uh, eh, it's not that bad really. As long as you have a warthog, you're fine. I should also say as well that, again, Martin comes at us with this weird mystery music, because even though we can easily deal with the Covenant, we still don't really know a lot about Halo, so by diving more into it, it gives us this strange feeling of mystery that we're probably going to uncover something we don't like. On our way to the room, we pick up the most powerful weapon in the game, the Rocket Launcher, ironically with the acronym SPANKER, and <laughs> let me tell you, it certainly lives up to that name. Even though you can only carry a short amount of ammo for it, the two rockets you get to fire clear up any obstacle with ease. Um, I get the feeling that I've done something wrong by turning off the security. We find the map room and discover where the control room is located. Cortana tries to contact Captain Keys, but Echo 419 tells us that The captain has dropped out of contact, Cortana. His ship may be out of range or having equipment problems. Eh, I'm sure he's fine. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Now, all we need to do now is to get back to the surface, so we can get 419 to take us to the control center. Not without leaving any Covenant out alive, of course. And what better way to do that with this epic theme? We get to Echo 419 and discover that the location to the control center is underground, so we descend deep into Halo as the mission ends. So what did I think of it? Well, if you couldn't really tell, it's a solid 10 for me, for the reasons I've already outlined. We finally get to one of my favorite levels of all time, Assault on the Control Room. Before we even begin, we get this brilliant line, I would have been your daddy. Oh, would you now? After making this grunt piss his pants, we begin the Assault on the Control Room. <laughs> One of the things that really stick out to me on this level is the sound design. The large, deep echoes of the underground rooms of Halo, the sound of the doors opening and closing, and the sounds of your footsteps just seem to be aesthetically pleasing to hear. As we venture deeper into the ring, we come across snow. For some strange reason, it's snowing underground. Even Cortana seemed confused about the strange weather. We suddenly get a transmission from Fireteam Zulu, even though it's a bit weird how our allies followed us here because it seemed like it was only Master Chief and Cortana who found it. And as far as I know, they only told Echo 419 where it was. Unless 419 told the UNSC Marines where to find us like the dirty little snitch! Anyhow, we have to get to Fireteam Zulu with, what else, another epic score from Martin. Don't do this, don't take this away from me! Dang it. Okay, second try. Haha! Get sticked on, you bit! Third time's the charm.
At this point, we might as well let Martin direct all of the OSTs and video games. We finally reach to ground level and help the marines out. Ah yeah, Warthog time! Wait, hang on, what the shit is that? That, my fellow Spartans and Marines, is a Wraith, a Covenant tank. I mean, from that description alone, you know what it is capable of. As we drive across the winter landscape, we finally reach the best vehicle in the game, the motherfucking Scorpion. The human tank, basically. But unlike the Wraith, you also get a minigun as a second firing option. Ha! Look at that Hunter, thinking he could easily destroy me. Well, guess again, bitch! I don't know, Johnson. I'm dead. Okay, let's try that again. We finally reach Fireteam Zulu and help them out. We need to scale this cliff, but those Covenant are blocking it. So we do what we do best. Murder them all. After helping out Fireteam Zulu, we now resume our task of finding the control center, and they don't even join us. Ungrateful bastards. Ah yes, smooth jazz over the massacre of my enemy. Be gone, heathens! You shall not stop my noble... Um, is that breathing guy here? Again, credit to Martin to make us feel a sense of dread because we are still on an alien ring, so we don't know what else it might be hiding. Another bridge to cross, more enemies to slay. Now, of course, I'm not blind. I am aware that this level does feel a bit repetitive sometimes because the rooms do look the same, as well as the pathways, indoor area, bridge, indoor with elevator, bridge, indoor, bridge, etc. So after a while it does get tiring, but thankfully, the music still keeps me entertained at least. We reach another bridge and, fun fact, if you're not quick enough you can hop onto this banshee here and skip a chunk of the game to reach the control center. And here we are, one final push towards the control center, and with that over, we finally did it. We finally reach Halo's control center. This is it, Halo's control center. Martin, why are you playing scary music? We insert Cortana into the control center as Master Chief what asks sort of her how we can use what Halo against the about? Covenant. Let's stay focused. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? This ring isn't a cudgel, you barbarian. You know what? Screw you, Cortana. I'll find my own girlfriend. Hello, I am the girlfriend, uh, you, um, you are loved, um, you, you are so fantastic, baby, um. Dude, you've been listening uh, to that for like five hours, are you alright? Um, you're, you're the oh, okay, coolest guy, geez. you know, love, you, I'm, I'm gonna fuck it. Cortana tells us that Halo also serves another it's purpose, forerunner. apparently it's Forerunner, and she makes a horrifying discovery. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. The Covenant found something. Buried in this ring. Something horrible. And now, they're afraid. Something buried? Where? The Captain. We've got to stop the Captain. Keys? What the are weapons we... cache he's looking for. It's not really... We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here. Find Keys. Stop him. Before it's too late! And with that horrifying note, the level ends. Obviously it's a straight down 10 for me. Yes, even though I've died lots of times and the level keeps on going and going, I still really like this level because it was the first ever Halo level that I've ever played 
and every time I play it, it brings back this nostalgic feeling from the weapons, the sounds, the music and the gameplay, everything fits together perfectly. On to the next level, Thief 4 3 Guilty Spark. Wait, hang on. Thief 4 3 Guilty Spark. Thief 4 3 Industries. Hmm. Right away, things don't seem to be right. A downed pelican and Covenant running away. Something in that entrance scared them away. So naturally, we go in because duh, keys, duh. Oh, hey, a fellow Marine. I'll blow your brains out! Get away from me! Don't touch me, you freaks! I won't be like you, I'll die first! Find your own hiding place, the monsters are everywhere! Play dead! That's what I did, play dead. They took the live ones. Oh god, I can still hear them. Monsters! Just leave me alone! Look, just oh. calm- Oh, okay, let's hear you out. They're gone! Get it? Gone! They won't get me! Oh god! Oh god, I don't wanna be like you! Please no! Please no! Okay, now that you're out of ammo, let's talk this- OI! He'll be fine. Obviously, it makes us the player feel terrified. Halo has a creature that terrified us and the Covenant. As we delve deeper into the facility, we come across this door and discover the body of a Marine. We decide to go through his helmet recordings, and this is what happened. Which is weird, right? I mean, look at it. Something scrambled the insides. What's that? Plasma scoring? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there was an accident, you know, friendly fire or something? What do we have, Sergeant? Looks like a Covenant patrol. Badass elite units. All KIA. Real pretty. Friend of yours? Nah, we just met. Right, well, let's get this door open. I'll try, sir, but it looks like these Covenant work pretty hard to lock it down. Just do it, son. Yes, sir. Got a bad feeling about this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain something. Sarge, can you hear me? What's going on, soldier? He's got contact! Lots of them! But they're not coming! They're, they're just staring through us! What's the flow? No! Corporal! Do you copy? Over! Mendoza, get your ass back up to second squad's position and find out what the hell is going on. But I don't have time for your lip, soldier. I gave you an Sarge, order. Sarge, listen. What is that? Where's that coming from, Everywhere. Mendoza? I don't. There, Mira. Ah, ah, hold get still. Out. Hold get still. Out. Let him have it. Ah. Sergeant, we're surrounded. God damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! There are too many, Sergeant! Don't even think about it, Marine. Oh, this is loco! Back here, Marine. That's an order. Jenkins! Well, that was... interesting. We then get attacked by those creatures that terrified us and the Covenant. <laughs> what? Those pieces of popcorn there? Come on, man. Surely it's not those that got us scared.
Okay, yep, no, I'm scared. All of a sudden, Halo changes from, yeah, let's kill some aliens, to, holy shit, this is now turning into Dead Space. Even though Dead Space came out later, but shut up, I'm the one doing the review, so I can do what I want. Basically, we are introduced to The Flood, a parasitic alien that can infiltrate live or dead bodies and turn them into this. Which makes you think, all those aliens you killed and the marines that died on your journey, all you did was just provide The Flood with food. And I really think turning Halo's security off wasn't such a bright idea. Hey, don't look at me, that was Cortana's idea. Of course, we can't introduce a zombie level without including the iconic weapon in any zombie medium. The shotgun, baby! Seriously, this shotgun will be your main working horse when dealing with the Flood. Luckily, they just run up to you and hit you. Okay, Hacks! I call Hacks! Yeah, so the Flood can also shoot you with any weapon they like, which is just... Great! Luckily, we managed to get out of the facility with some actual alive marines. Thank God! Let's get out of here! As we fight our way through the flood, we make it to this strange tower and get teleported by this floating light bulb. It introduces itself as D43 Guilty Spark. Ha! That's the name of the level! Ha! He's the monitor of Installation 4, which I'm guessing is this Halo ring. He says that his task is to stop the Flood from leaving the ring, and he needs our assistance. So he just teleports us with him to... Uh, the library. But before we get into that dumpster fire of a level, this level is surprisingly somewhat short. But it's a good short. A 10 out of 10 for me. I like the way how the Flood is introduced, and the fact you get a shotgun as well, so that makes me happy. Anyhow, on to the library. So the goal of this level is to get the index, that floating green thing in the beginning cutscene, to apparently activate Halo. Simple enough, with my shotgun I can easily- wait, 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 hang on, where's my shotgun?! Okay, fine, let's just continue. Now you may think to yourself, hell yeah, a zombie level, I'm gonna wipe the floor with them! But trust me, by the end of this level, you'll think to yourself, dear god, I regret my existence. First off, you're constantly surrounded by the Flood. Yes, I know that's why they're called the Flood, but shut up and let me make my case, judge! This wouldn't be bad if you were A, not either getting riddled with bullets, B, having little popcorn constantly jumping over you, especially if you get these Nikocado avocado looking ass things that birth more little popcorns when they die, which may I remind you, hurt you if you get too close, or C, just the Flood not knowing personal space. At least the Flood don't carry very powerful weapons. Yes, much to my absolute delight, the Flood can fire rockets. Fantastic. Fantastic! Then to cap off this shit Sunday, the level is so goddamn long and uninteresting that all you are doing is going through the same hallways and lifts over and over and over again to a point where you are hoping that you are near the end of the level. Also doesn't help where there are segments where people 3 just fucks off to open the door once you have to do a one-man stand to fight the flood until the door opens! Really, the only good things I can say about the level is that you do get some health kits and overshields to help, you do get these sentries that help you fight the flood, and finally, because the flood use weapons, you do constantly have ammo and weapons to fight. After slogging through this shithole, we finally get the index as T43 teleports us to the next level. Thank God! So obviously it's a 3 out of 10, and I don't think I need to say why. 343 teleports us to the control center as we make our way to activate Halo. And wow, I gotta say guys, what an absolute adventure this was. Activate Halo, and save the galaxy, and get some mad bitches. Or so we think. Cortana stops the activation of the Index and tells us about the horrible truth about Halo. We're watching you toady about helping that thing get set to slit our throats. Hold on now. He's a friend. Oh, I didn't realize. He's your pal, is he? Your chum? Do you have any idea what that bastard almost made you do? Yes. Activate Halo's defenses and destroy the Flood, which is why we brought the Index to the Control Center. You mean this? A construct in the core? That is absolutely unacceptable. Sod off! 
What in madness? I shall purge you at once! You sure that's a good idea? How? How? How dare you? I'll... Do what? I have the index. You can just float and sputter. Enough. The flood is spreading. If we activate Halo's defenses, we can wipe them out. You have no idea how this ring works, do you? Why the Forerunners built it? Halo doesn't kill Flood, it kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. We're all equally edible. The only way to stop the Flood is to starve them to death. And that's exactly what Halo is designed to do. Wipe the galaxy clean of all sentient life. You don't believe me? Ask him. Is it true? More or less. Technically, this installation's pulse has a maximum effective radius of 25,000 light years. But once the others follow suit, this galaxy will be quite devoid of life. Or at least any life with sufficient biomass to sustain the flood. Okay, so now we fully understand what Halo was for. Halo was built by the Forerunners to contain a species called the Flood. The Flood was such a major threat to the galaxy that the Forerunners built Halo with another function. Just in case the Flood ever broke out, there would be a firing mechanism for Halo which would wipe out every sentient life in the galaxy. So then the Flood would basically just starve to death. It's kind of horrifying seeing these beautiful landscapes of Halo from the luscious green, the beautiful waterfalls and the stunning scenery not knowing that it contains a horrifying alien and a purpose. After learning the truth, Fearful 3 asks us to give him Cortana, and obviously we're not going to give away our AIGF, so Fearful 3 teleports away to... I don't know, his room? <laughs> it's here that we are introduced to the final enemy of the game, these flying drones called sentries. They fire a constant beam at you, which doesn't do a lot of damage, but when facing a group of them, it can be quite difficult. Luckily, they are especially weak to plasma weapons, so a plasma rifle or the plasma pistol will easily take care of them. Cortana tells us that in order to stop 343, we need to destroy Halo. She continues by saying that we need a starship explosion in order to destabilize the ring. She suggests that we use the fusion reactors of the Pillar of Autumn to trigger the massive explosion. That didn't happen. Moving on. Cortana also suggests that we need to find a way to distract the 43 just in case he or his sentinels find a way to fire Halo without using the index. So she suggests that we break Halo's primary firing mechanisms. As we head down the structure, Cortana tells us that we should take one of the banshees the Covenant has left. That way we can reach the pulse generators. It's here that we get one of the best vehicles in the game, the Banshee. Even though we already got one in a previous level, but that one doesn't count because that was more of an exploit than something for the player to use, so shut your gob! With the Banshee, it's one of the only vehicles in this game that allows you to fly around the map. The Banshee comes with two weapons, the standard pulse rifles, and a plasma... bomb? missile? Either way, it creates an explosion. But they are quite delicate, one good placed grenade can easily kill it. So if anything, the Banshee is a glassed cannon. It's great to use, and it's got powerful weapons, but it can break easily. Eh, it's not a big deal, I'll just quickly get it to me, god damn it! After reaching the first firing mechanism, we need to destroy it, and how do we do that? We just stand near it. Yeah, kind of, kind of anti-climatic, isn't it? Cortana does say that she uses your suit's energy shields to destroy it, but I like to think that Chief's odour is that bad that the smell could just destroy machinery. Luckily, we don't have to worry about the flood showing- OH GOD DAMN IT! Well, at least they don't have their rockets. Look, I know it seems like I don't really like the Flood, when that's not really true. I do like them, they are a horrifying enemy to face, and I like their designs, but they are annoying to face sometimes, since they can take any weapon on the field, and the fact they can easily get up in your face, and especially when you've recently just finished the library, you just get annoyed at them easily. Also it doesn't really help when you're on a narrow bridge with those exploding bastards, so at this point you might as well make a list of all the different ways to die, Oh yeah, did I also get to mention that there is a Banshee shooting at you as well? Ah, whatever, at least we got through the exit and... Um... Hi? Well, um... This is certainly... 
awkward. We finally reached ground level and we... Anyhow, after going through a, um, easy trial, we reach the second firing mechanism and destroy it. Afterwards, Cortana informs us that she's found the Pillar of Autumn and that its fusion reactors are still active. However, it has a failsafe, and in order to get rid of the security, we need to get authorization from Captain Keys, or his neural implant, just in case he's... Eh, I'm sure he's fine. But first, we need to detonate one last firing mechanism. We finally reach the final weapon mechanism and destroy it. Chief suggests that we should take a ride and find keys, but Cortana tells us that will take too long. Instead, she suggests that we use a teleportation grid, similar to how 343 gets around Halo quickly, and she learned about it whilst she was in the control center. Hmm, yes, yeah, very convenient. Something tells me I'm not gonna like this. Cortana continues by saying that teleportation requires a lot of energy to pull it off, so she's going to use our suit's energy to do it. What do you think I am, Cortana? Some toy? Master Chief gives Cortana the go, and we get teleported to the next mission, which I'm... not looking forward to. Overall, this level was a 6 out of 10, mostly because of the awkward places to fight the Flood, and the Flood itself, but mainly because it's, well, it's backtracking, really. All this level is, is Assault on the Control Room, but in reverse, and without any of the great music accompanying it. And not to mention that it feels like a chore to go through. Trust me, this level took a long time to complete it, and I cut a lot of the footage out. So going back to a previous statement, I said that I was not looking forward to this mission. You're probably thinking to yourself, Oh, surely this level is at least better than the library. No. As the level starts, Cortana tells us that Keys is alive and his implants are intact, and she tries to teleport us close to Keys. data needs to be right sorry it's those little bits of humor that just really sell the game for me uh keys doesn't sound very good he probably has a cold so let's go find the captain then yay fighting the flood in our hallways my favorite as we continue we see this massive hole so it's only natural that we jump into the hole Afterwards, we need to find a way back onto the ship whilst dealing with both the Covenant and the Flood. Come on! Come on! Damn it! Oh, thank God, the gravity lift. Now all we need to do now is head for the control room and find keys, which I'm sure is going to go swell. Where the hell did that explosion even come from?! Come on, let me through, you tactical bastards! Ah. Hang on. Where did he come from? Ah, oh, god damn it! Yeah, yeah, I know, trust me, I'm already feeling that myself with this level. His vitals are fading, please, Chief, hurry! Yes, I know, Cortana, but I'm currently occupied at the- Right, you know what? You could go kiss- We finally reached the control room, now let's go to Keys and bitch slap it for making us go through this goddamn- Oh... 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 Oh, oh, oh my... Unfortunately, we're too late. Keys has become part of the Flood by turning into a giant tree. It's actually kind of sad because we were probably hearing his last consciousness trying to deter us away. But well, now you're probably thinking, well, fuck, now that Keys is dead, how else are we going to get rid of the failsafe mechanisms? Well, Cortana did say that we either need him alive, or his neural implants. What he'd want us to do. Done. I have the code. We should go. <laughs> he has a hole in his face.
Okay, now that that's out of the way, what we need to do now is to get out of here. God damn it, let me through! One thing I should mention is that if you see a grunt with this weapon, a fuel rod cannon, after you kill it, move away from it! This is because it explodes after the grunt's death, so you don't want to do what I did and forgot it does that. Come on, come on, shit! Oh wait, this time I got- Fuck! Aha! This time I got out- Okay, I think you guys get the point. I died a lot on this level. Oi! After lots of pain, we finally escape the ship and head for the final level, the moor. This level is a 2 out of 10. Oh, you didn't like it, I didn't give an explanation of why I didn't like this level. Well, put this up for yourself and you'll understand why! After the pain and misery of the past three levels, we finally reach a proper good level this time. And sadly, the final level of the game. Every time this cutscene plays, it always gives me goosebumps. From the music, the title card, and the symbolism on display, it all just combines into this beautiful scene. It's ironic how we started on the Pillar of Autumn, and on the final level of the game, we end on the same ship. It's like we've come around full circle, and the title card perfectly fits, and the horse you rode on. So, our objective of this level is to head to the bridge. When we are there, we can use Captain Key's neural implants to overload the ship's fusion engines. Or when playing English, initiate the self-destruction sequence. The explosion should be powerful enough to destroy Halo. And can I just say I love the contrast here. From the bright energetic ship to this rusted dark burnt up ship, this level right here shows you that how backtracking should be done. And again, the sweet music that accompanies this level. It's almost kind of sad to see the state of the ship and what's happened to the crew. On this level, you'll of course be fighting the Flood in narrow hallways, which is just... Uh... But funny enough, I didn't have that much issue with it. Sentinels and what's left of the Covenant. After clearing our way to the bridge, we insert Cortana into the mainframe. She initiates the self-destruction and gives us enough time to... No. The monitor comes along and stops the countdown. So, fuck, what do we do now? Trying to take the core offline. Even if I could get the countdown restarted, I don't know what to do. How much firepower would you need to crack one of the engine shields? Not much. A well-placed grenade, perhaps, but why? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Also, hang on, a simple grenade can easily crack a ship's engines? I'm surprised the ship was even allowed to go in the first place, considering it takes one grenade to destroy an entire galactic ship! Anyhow, that's our new objective. Reach the engine room. But not make it a quick stop to the motherfucking armory! Ah, yeah, now we are- wait, hang on. Better. Here, we can stock up on weapons and grenades for the engine room. You have three choices, the assault rifle, shotgun, or rocket launcher. But to be honest, I always pick the shotgun and the rocket launcher. Also, going back a bit, funny enough, those invisible flood enemies, that's the only time you see them in the game. We make it to engineering and... Alert! The monitor has disabled all command access. We can't restart the countdown. The only remaining option is to detonate the ship's fusion reactors. That should do enough damage to destroy Halo. So, as Cortana says, we need to open the exhaust couplings. From there, that will expose the shaft that leads to a primary fusion drive core. Then, you need to throw a grenade or shoot a rocket into it. You need to do this four times, with two each side, whilst also dealing with the Flood and Sentinels. 
trust me, I know this sounds complicated, but once you destroy the first two, you realise that it's actually quite easy to do it. It really is that simple. Plus, don't worry about running low on ammo. You can always go back to the armory to stock up, which is not too far from engineering. Plus, since you are facing the Sentinels and the Flood, if you leave them be, they'll just start fighting each other. And before you ask, no, you can't kill the Monitor. You can shoot as many weapons as you like. Unfortunately, he has the power of plot armor. Ah, uh, we all love good inspiration music, don't we? After destroying the last two engines, we now make our escape. Wait, hang on, 419 is alive? To be honest, you deal with so much for the past three levels that you just assume she's dead. Or just you forgot she existed. Once we get out of the elevator, we perform the holy ritual of Halo, a Warthog finale run. We race through the ship with a five minute countdown as epic music plays. And let me tell you, you are constantly filled with adrenaline to escape. From the bendy corridors to enemies shooting at you, the leaps and the explosions, it's pretty epic and nerve wracking. We managed to get outside so that Echo 419 can pick us up. Guess what happens next? Yes, Echo 419 dies. She gets shot down by banshees. Rest in peace, Echo 419. May you deliver more things in heaven. Oh no! Anyway... Cortana luckily finds a spare ship docked in Cargo Bay. With three minutes left on the clock, we make a dash for it. With of course Martin giving us the most suitable theme ever. This part always gives me anxiety. Anyways... Oh shit! I only have a minute and 30 seconds left! Come on, come on, out of my way! We did it. We destroyed Halo. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Master Chief asks Cortana if anybody else made it out, but Cortana says... Scanning. Just dust and echoes. We're all that's left. We learned that we were the only ones who managed to escape, whilst everyone else died. It's kind of an empty victory. Yes, I know you're going to say it, but shut it. Cortana does make a good point, stating that we did what we had to do. If the Flood made it out on the ring, then who's to say they won't arrive on Earth or terrorize an entire galaxy? Plus, taking out a Covenant Armada is always a plus. But with all that, we get this beautiful ending to a brilliant campaign. Plus the level is obviously a 10 out of 10. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. It's a shame that the Master Chief Collection doesn't show the credits of the first Halo game, but I suppose I could somewhat excuse it because Martin's music provides so much emotion at the final part that it satisfies me enough not to really have that credit scene. Son of a bitch, you're somehow alive! I guess that only means a sequel is coming out. 
Fun fact, if you beat the game on legendary mode, you get an extra cutscene. Come here, you motherfucker! Oh, shit. This is it, baby. Hold me. But, as the game says, Halo is finished. But we're only getting started. Now we can talk about Halo multiplayer. Hello everyone, and thank you very much for watching part one. I know, I look scruffy. That's what editing and Christmas work does to you. I just wanted to say a big thank you for watching this video, and it's taken me a very, very, very long time just to get this video by the amount of stress and just pain this video has been through to edit, to record. I've had so many technical hiccups that it's unreal, and as you've probably seen on my community as you've seen on my community post, my computer literally just died. Not exactly died, but more in the sense of I had to switch to the motherboard in order just to get it to work again. But either way, I've managed to get that done, and hopefully content will resume as normal. But first, I will be making a resume on that part two video, as I've said before, that this video will be split into two parts, since I couldn't really get it all done. But as I said, thank you very much for watching. Also, don't worry about uh, Nero Oni, I still have intentions to continue that, it's just that with this Game Talk Halo video, it's taken a very, very long time, and a lot longer than I thought. Like, I kid you not, I've got like 10,000 words on my script. So, obviously the video's not done, but don't worry, I haven't abandoned Nero Oni, I'll continue at some point, but first I just want to get the Halo video done. But Obviously, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why don't you like, comment, favor, and subscribe to see more content like this. Have a very good Christmas and a happy new year. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care now.